Today's episode of Mark Who 42's Universe is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash Mark Who 42. There are over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, you lucky guys. That's www.audibletrial.com slash Marku42. And now, here's the show. Hey guys, this is Chad Rook from War for the Planet of the Apes, and you are listening to Mark Who 42. Welcome to Mark Who 42. That's right, Mark Who 42, Doctor Who, and other things here on Krypton Radio. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten, and with me as ever are... Patty Hawkins. And Kayla Scalillo. Wow, we got a small team today, but that's cool. We've got a great interview that Christian is going to do with, well, actually, Kayla, you might actually be interested in this interview. It's with the weather wizard from The Flash, Chad Rook. I am very interested in that. (laughs) You you should definitely stick around and stay with us. Chad Rook, he's done Bates Motel. He's in a lot of things, and Christian does a fine interview later on in the program. But first... It's time for the Doctor Who News with Kayla Oscalillo. Kayla, what do you have for us in the world of Doctor Who? Well, first off, as we sit here filming, recording however you want to say it. Um, it's National Bowtie Day, so... Is it National Bowtie Day? Happy National Bo- Bowtie Day. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I did not know that. I didn't until like an hour ago when one of my friends posted it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I miss National Donut Day, I miss National Ice Cream Day, and now I miss National Bowtie Day. <laughs> I know, I miss all the good food ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so moving on. Moving on. <laughs> I don't really know what you can say about Bow Tie Day, um, except that it's cool. Yeah, uh, that's, that's about all you can say. Pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> all right. So, unfortunately for Doctor Who, the 2016 Hugo Awards came out, and Doctor Who Heaven Sent was passed over. Uh, it went instead to uh, Jessica Jones. But you know, see, this is actually kind of good. So Heaven Sent got second place, so it didn't win. But the Jessica Jones episode that won was the final episode. And who, of course, was the star of the final episode? One of the stars? David Tennant. Which means that the Doctor did win a huge... (laughs) Loophole. Loophole. So we we still got got points there. (laughs) No, you don't think so, uh, Patrick? (laughs) No, I no, I I uh uh no no I no, you, I, you I, don't I don't give I, any creds. I don't I don't I don't I don't agree with. Uh, oh, that I'm not saying you all. agree with the fact that Jessica Jones should have won, but I mean, do you agree that you know it was David Tennant that won? Any accolade that show gets is because of David Tennant. It's, yeah, it's it's it's, it's mm-hmm. nothing 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 against the actress, but uh, the, the the character is incredibly one note throughout the whole thing she's yeah. Only, yeah she's only got two two moods okay like sour and pissy and uh, three moods sour pissy and drunk and that's kind of it it's like okay we get it you right. don't want to be a superhero and you don't have to drag that out for you know as as long as they did so uh, I'm just... if i remember the comic it kind of drew on there too it really did and now all she is in the comics is is the mother of luke cage's uh daughter that's it yeah. That's her old. That is her only purpose. And occasionally, once the blue moon, she grabs the kid and she'll punch something because you know wants to be all. Hey, you know, moms can be tough too. You go, girl. All that nonsense. And yeah. Yeah, it's 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 more Bendis crap. And he will never find respect or succor in my heart for anything. So. All right. So, but David Tennant won the award. So 
There yeah, but I just yay you know, who? I mean, it's it, I mean it's it's the Hugos. They haven't been you know, really haven't been much anyway. So well, yeah. you know, Doctor Who has won Hugos in the past. I mean, Stephen Moffat has won several. Yeah, I, uh, all right. It's it's yeah, it's problematic. All right, well, that's your opinion, and 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 I I can see where you're coming from on that, Kayla. What else do we have? So BBC actor David Suchet is going to appear in Doctor Who. Uh, he's going to be playing a character called the Landlord. Mm-hmm. Now, that would be Poirot, wouldn't it? Yes. He plays yes. Poirot. And, and that's actually a good – he's a very good actor. Very, uh, very good actor. Uh, I am very happy that we have that kind of caliber of acting on Doctor Who. And we always get good acting, but – the show definitely brings some class to this season. Yeah, his lineup of former work is is pretty impressive. He's had some pretty pretty big, well known stuff under his belt. So well, it'll like definitely what? be interesting. Um, what other than Poirot? Well, I'll put him on the map was uh, Tale of Two Cities uh, way way back in like 1980, and uh, you know he was a great Stoke, like a Tarzan, which yeah, is yeah. an extremely underrated uh, yeah. movie, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of villains in the eighties, uh, like you know, again one of the one of the evil terrorist guys, an Iron Eagle. Um, again, <laughs> that, that's a that's a good hunk of of eighties <laughs> cheese. A uh, little drummer girl. Uh, oh god, what else? I think he shot up a Riley Ace of Spines. Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, and of course, let's 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 not forget the Wing Commander movie <laughs> as, much, <laughs> as much as we would like to. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so that's going to be great. He's going to be playing the lo- not the lodger. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's James Corden. Is the lo- no? Actually, that's Matt Smith. It's- it just sounds like they're they're kind of hitting the wall with regards to names for antagonists. You know, I mean, the I mean the, the the master, the celestial toy maker, the meddling monk, the landlord. Yeah, well, you got to run out eventually. Yeah, I just know. I so I hear the word landlord, and I think it was SNL and and Eddie Murphy. <laughs> kill my, kill land- my landlord, kill, kill the my landlord, landlord. break his dick. L L, my landlord. I love that. I love that. But I, I'm sure that's not the part he's playing. No, no. Okay. I, oh, I, I, <laughs> what else, Kayla? Well, Peter Capaldi and Pearl Mackey are going to be attending New York Comic Con. They'll be there with the cast of Class, uh, the creator and executive producer, Patrick Ness. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Smith and Karen Gillan will be there as well. So it's going to be a a pretty big Doctor Who lineup at New York this year. Yeah, and just to let people know, if you go online to New York Comic Con to buy tickets, they're sold out of everything except Thursday. Wow, they, they, they are it, sold out. Uh, no, it, it, it's not a question of being sold out. It was a lottery to get in, to get tickets. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I put myself in for a media pass, but uh, I, you know, who knows? Who knows? And I'll be sneaking in your luggage. Uh, I mean, what? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay. I think it would be awesome if you could go, but... I, I have no idea where you're gonna stay. Well, I have relatives who. Live okay, all that. All right, then. I'm that's, totally fine. That, on that's that. the biggest. That's the biggest bitch about New York Comic Con is that you know because it's in New York City, Manhattan. All the hotels are like eight hundred dollars. Yeah. No, I have a place. To stay. I have a place to stay if right. uh, I get the press pass. All right. All right. Sounds so, good. Yeah. Uh, Kayla, do we have any more news? All right. Last, we've got. Um, Candy Jar Books just announced the release of the second volume of The Havoc Files, Mm -hmm. which is um, collecting short stories about Lethbridge Stewart. The stories that are going to be in this one were originally released as digital downloads, but they're now going to put them in book form. Oh, good. Good. I I love the Lethbridge Stewart series. I think I've brought this up in a previous show. They are... Is this the Brigadier? The Brigadier, yeah. Well, it's before... It's between... Web of Fear and when he's the brigadier in the invasion. Oh, it's nice! Between there, a backstory galore. All right. And they can't mention the Doctor, but they have rights to some of the monsters, and they can talk about the Great Intelligence. And it, it's really cool. They can talk about Doris, you know, his wife, and, yeah. or to be. So I mean, they they can. It, it's a really good story, and they get real Doctor Who authors that have written for the books. They've 
right for this too. So it, it's a really good series, and I've got a few of them on my Kindle. And I suggest that you go online and order a copy of the Havoc Files too, because I'm going to do it. Yeah, I might have to, because he was always like a favorite character of mine. So to see more of him would mm-hmm. definitely be interesting. And it it sounds pretty cool. I mean, I didn't really know much about it until you just said, but those sound pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, and it's it's always good to see the Brig portrayed favorably. You know, sometimes, yeah, you know, sometimes he was there to be the, the military jerk foil to the doctor. And then sometimes he was a contemporary. And I always liked him as the doctor's unofficial, like, longest and best friend that the doctor never could never owned up to or never confessed to. And just being such an integral part of the mythology. And uh, and I, I wish the character of his daughter would elicit more of that. But there's a disconnect. I don't I don't it, nothing, nothing against the, the actress and nothing against the way the character's written. I just. I don't see her being Lethbridge Stewart's daughter. Okay. I, I just don't see it. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm guessing that's all the news we have. Yeah, that is it, unfortunately. It was a very slow-ish week, so not much to report right now. Uh, Patrick, do you have anything? I know you had some news about a certain uh, fundraising thing. Uh, yes. Uh, anybody who was uh, around in the 90s might have remembered uh, Film Threat magazine. Um, yeah. Before there was the internet, there was things like like Film Threat and, uh, and, and, and Film Film Threat was sort of the earliest of the guerrilla style film fans, publications and journalism. They were did a lot of coverage of independent films of all genres, and they kind of had this middle finger to big Hollywood where they would actually be brutally honest uh, about like movies and they wouldn't they would do a review and they would talk about the whole character, the director or the creative teams, whole things about it. And they were just at, at a really it really reflected a sort of film fandom at the time and everybody who like kind of wanted to, to had a, a aspirations for it. And uh, like most print journalism in the nineties, it eventually sort of petered out. They attempted to do it as a, as a website and just couldn't quite make the translation. And then it's been sort of in limbo for many years. And now Chris Gore has decided now's time to bring it back. Uh, there's a Kickstarter going right now, a uh, save film threat. And if it achieves it, there is going to be, more of that very humorous, very honest movie journalism about like genre based stuff, a lot of coverage of independent stuff, a lot of geek stuff, and a whole slew of uh, specialized podcast programming. Which uh, let's let's just say it it, it it would be it would be good for me for this uh, Kickstarter. <laughs> to see. And, and if that's it's good for you. It's good for us. Yeah, I, I yeah. think I'd go ahead and say that. So, uh, uh, there's a sideline thing. Is anybody uh, uh, the the new pictures uh, coming? out for uh, the new season. Have you looked at Capaldi's awesome gray suit? No, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen that picture. It's yet. really badass. It's like he it's it's like he's taken the zipper hoodie thing and turned it into like a long coat and uh, with a blue lining and he the picture I'm looking at right now will share rather I mean he looks like a badass modern Bertwee. Oh wow. All right. I don't think That's I've seen that. I'll have to look that up. I have to look that. Uh, if you want to help Chris Gore save film threat, go to kickstarter.com slash projects slash that Chris Gore slash save hyphen film hyphen threat. If you go there, you can donate money and let's get film threat back. Donate a dollar or three. That's mm-hmm. that's what I've been telling everybody. You know, just a buck or three. You know, just whatever. You know, instead of going to Starbucks, you know, go to McDonald's and use the two and a half dollars difference and donate it to Film Threat. How's but, that? Hey, donate five dollars like you're buying the magazine. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Hey, <laughs> there you so go. it's gonna be in it's gonna be in podcast form. You said. Yeah. It's going to be, no, it's going to, podcasting or, would be part of its, if, if, if it's, if it's catalog, but it's going to be a full multimedia, uh, there are plans for, for all forms of media, let's put it that way. Oh, wow, okay, cool. All right, Kayla, I think it's time for You Know What. Ooh, fun times. Birthdays! <laughs> We only have one. Uh, well, September. I'm sure there are probably tons of birthdays, but we have well, one yes. special one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, September 1st is going to be Burn Gorman, who we all know best as Owen in Torchwood. Ah, the bastard. Okay. <laughs> 
I, well, no, no, I don't want to say that, Burn. I'm sorry. He was also uh, just in, wasn't he just in a program on ABC? He was in Forever or something as the bad guy. That show got canceled, didn't it? Uh, it doesn't matter. All right. So we're going to go take a break. When we come back, we have an interview by uh, Christian Basil with the Weather Wizard on Flash. Okay, no, we have an interview <laughs> by Christian with Chad Rook. So <laughs> stick around. And you're listening to Marku42 on Krypton Radio. <laughs> Hello, I'm Nicholas Briggs, the voice of many monsters on Doctor Who and executive producer of Big Finish Productions. And I'm pleased to announce that Mark Who 42 books have joined forces with Big Finish to bring you Big Finish Audio. There's this fellow who calls himself the Doctor and he says he has saved me and we are in his time machine. You're right. I think I've broken something. What about you? Yes, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, I rather think I broke your fall. Oh, sorry. Mark Who 42 Books will now offer to bring you the best in Big Finish audio. But why are they here? Hmm? How do you do? I beg your pardon? Oh, no need to. I'm the Doctor, and this I is... I am Leela. By all means, please do come out to play, Doctor. I'm waiting for you. To find where Mark Who 42 books will be, go to markwho42.net or on their Facebook site at markwho42. What are you saying? They fizzled in somehow, like the TARDIS. Yeah, transmat from another dimension. The, the, the TARDIS doesn't fizzle. It's more of a... Also, go to markwho42.net and download my interview with the team. Your executive producer at Big Finish Productions. Correct. Correct. Is this a quiz? Mark Who 42, taking you to the Hooniverse and beyond. The voice of Christian Basil, take one. Hi, I'm Christian Basil, and I would like to provide my voice for all your voiceover needs, such as... Okay, like an announcer. Like a what? Like an announcer. For all your voiceover needs, such as animation, radio, announcements, introductions... Now an old man. I can even record voicemail for all the mashuganas that call you. A pirate. Arr, and it won't cost you a lot of treasure for me services. Arr. Creepy movie voice. Just call 407-761-2679. 407-761-2679 or email voice of Christian Basil at yahoo.com. Well, how was that? That's a wrap. Hi, folks. This is Christian Basil, Mark Who 42. And if you've been lucky enough to catch us at conventions and wondered how you could hire us to come to your convention or special event, simply go to Heroes on Hand, click the podcast icon and click the icon for mark who 42 on our page on heroes on hand you can actually click the button that says click here to book more who 42 for your next event and that's all you have to do once again if you want to hire us for your next event simply go to heroes on hand.com click on podcast click on our icon and click the green button to book us for your next event you're gonna love us we'll see you there Hello, this is Sylvester McCoy, Doctor Who number seven. I uh, on Mark Who forty two. What on earth is that? I've no idea really. All these numbers. <laughs> hey gang, welcome back to Mark Who forty two, taking you to the Hooniverse and beyond. And in this week's segment, we have somebody who is beyond the Hooniverse. We've got Mr. Chad Rook. He's been on the Bates Motel and the Flash. And for our audience who may not be familiar with your work, but we've seen you all over the conventions, Chad. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure, man. I'm uh, basically uh, CW regular. Um, been on about uh, eight different CW shows. Um, everything from Supernatural to, like you said, Flash and, uh -huh. and uh, iZombie, all those kind of things. So I uh, kind of uh, travel all over doing all these Comic-Cons and stuff, you know, hanging out with the fans and stuff, which is a lot of fun. Um, basically I've been doing this for a long game and, uh, it's, uh, you know, 16 years going in at it and, uh, you know, not only CW and, you know, uh, doing some films here now, uh, creating my own stuff. Uh, I, I do uh, the directing, producing side of things and the writing and, uh, and, uh, have my own production company. So we started, uh, doing our own films and that's actually taking off right now too. So it's, it's a fun little time right now, brother, uh, from, from both sides of the camera. Oh, geez, you got different hats to wear. Now, what's the name of your company? Uh, it's called Checkmate Films, and we just went in partnership with a uh, uh, company called uh, Perfect Walk Production. So uh, basically, it's it's kind of a, 
have two different production companies, but uh, the big one that's doing the feature films and stuff now is, is called Perfect Walk Production. So when did you begin your career? You said 16 years. That's that's an impressive time frame. Yeah, well, I kind of started actually in high school, even beyond that, you know, in elementary, just doing a little drama stuff. But professionally, I, I moved to Vancouver, uh, Canada to, you know, start the audition process and actually do real TV shows and stuff. And that uh, that was back in the year uh, 2000s. And for a while now, we've had a really down period. But uh, this last uh, two years and, and now, I don't think uh, Vancouver's actually ever been busier. And, and to be honest with you, it actually has more work than Hollywood itself right now. Everybody is up here. Everything is filming up here. It's, it's pretty crazy. Now, you say you started back in high school. What got you getting the acting bug? Because I, you know, I think all of us have had that high school feeling as mom and dad going like, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a teacher. Yeah. And I go... No, Dad, I'm going to go into acting. They're like cringing yeah. the whole way to college. So. <laughs> well, actually, um, I went through the whole bullying crap uh, kind of in high school. High school was not fun for me at all. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, always picked on those kind of things. Didn't really come from a, uh, a wealthy family at all. And that kind of stemmed a lot of things. And uh, um, when I got into drama, uh, drama just seemed to be when I was on stage, you know, making people laugh and stuff. That just seemed to be the one and really only place uh, in the high school time frame that uh, people kind of accepted me and liked me so it just kind of really you know hit home with me that you know I could be myself on stage and and uh, in a way at the same time be someone different and uh, and be accepted so it, 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 it kind of hit me that way so what was your first gig on stage uh, on stage man I think I, I remember I played oh my god uh, my very first thing was I played Santa Claus in a, in a Christmas play <laughs> and then uh, and then I went on to play you know everything from Sherlock Holmes to uh, one of the Beatles members uh, it was it was a bunch of high school is high school man you just kind of make it up as you get over it and then uh, right out of high school we actually I actually uh, moved up north and got into actual musicals um, played Tommy G less in the music man uh-huh. and then uh i saved up a lot of money and then uh i got into modeling actually because uh i'm from a, a small prairie town in alberta canada and uh, there's no acting industry there at all so i got scouted as a model um went to the states and everything kind of for a while and then uh ended up uh, moving to vancouver uh and got an agent and started acting right away now how did the modeling get go it was good i mean like i said it was a good avenue those two uh, industries kind of go hand in hand in regards to connections and community and you know that kind of stuff um i never liked it myself um but it was a, it was a way of means to, to money and, and connections and so i just kind of utilized it uh to get to where i actually wanted to be so what was the first acting acting gig you did was that sleepover nightmare sleepover nightmare was the actual first like feature film uh kind of audition i went there uh, in vancouver and i got that right away and i played you know my my villain career so to speak started then oh, okay um, yeah and then uh and then i got a tv series called john doe literally the smallest line in the world i i, I was in there and and i put 20 dollars in a jar and it said how fast is lightning and literally that's how fast i was on frame and it was uh, done and you know you start off small and you build your way up and and uh you know, uh, we, we eventually get there if you keep going at it. That's actually funny because during my little small acting career that I had, which was ended up being nil, I was actually an, a featured extra for a movie that was called King's Ransom. Not the one that eventually made its fruition years later, but it starred the guy from um, – Blue Lagoon and starred Michelle Pfeiffer's sister of all things. Her sister. <laughs> Her sister in all things. And yeah, and I was just walking down the street and I was, uh, I think the, uh, the, uh, the people who were coordinating things got it wrong, so uh, I got in big trouble because we were told to come down and fly upstairs, and here comes a car around the corner, but well, nobody told the car to stop. <laughs> so oh, we just kept yeah. looking with my little sister. But the memory was never made, so it went into development hell and we, we've never seen it ever since there. so uh, I, I always find it entertaining when people t- tell me their their background stories man because it's it, it gets pretty crazy it gets really weird too i mean we were filming all for hours a night i mean it, it nobody knows they think there it's a nine to five job no and these things are like 12 to 16 hour shifts yeah. i mean i saw darkness when i went into work and i saw darkness coming home from work. yeah and it's in it's you're literally unfortunately you're you're the lowest of the totem pole on set so it's like you know you have 50 people sharing a couple donuts for 14 hours exactly. it's pretty crazy yeah yeah hey that donut was fresh 16 hours ago but hey yeah i i man i did it too even you know 16 years ago when i started i thought you know i, I did one extra gig I, I, actually it was on a show called smallville the superman show and i did it one time one day and that was the first last and ever time i ever did background work and i was like this is the worst job in the history so how did you get that gig what the extra i, I well yeah, yeah. I, I, anybody can be an extra actually right. yeah there's there's extra agencies out there you literally just go and you sign up and they will send you there uh they just need 
space filled in the backgrounds of every show and stuff. So it's very easy to get extra extra work. And I just wanted to be on set when I was young, you know, and, and I thought, oh, well, this would be way. But I, I really quickly realized that being an extra, watching other people do what I wanted to do was not for me. And uh, I couldn't do it anymore. So. I got a real agent, and uh, and I, I did it properly and, and worked the way up. Now, and you've got some impressive series that came out here. You have, like, John Doe, The Selection, but I think our fans are more inclined for more, like, Supernatural, Bates Motel, and The Flash. Yeah, I mean, there's been a few along the way that, you know, really hit home with, with fans. I think one of the first ones that was really big for me was, was Cult. Um, mm-hmm. Cult was kind of this uh, underground-type dark series Um and it was kind of a show within a show, and but the fans just loved it. And uh, this industry is very strange because I still, to this day, don't understand fully how it works. How you have a show that has such a good following, and then they cancel it. And Cult for for one was um, we filmed the whole season. They canceled it after episode nine. I think there was thirteen episodes total. And then uh, what they did is they aired it over in Europe, and they had such a big following that then the American network said, okay, by popular demand, we're going to bring it back and finish the season one. But then after the season one, they canceled it anyway. So I was like, how do you bring it back by popular demand and then cancel it anyway? I really don't understand this industry sometimes, man. <laughs> so. I think the weirdest one that we've come across in in, 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 it, in it all its time is Supergirl. Firefly? Oh, it's from Firefly, too. But uh, Supergirl – well, going back to the CW, which goes yeah. to the Flash – and her starting off at CBS, now she's moving over to CW, and mm-hmm. we've kind of affectionately called it a comic world because we think that's where it's leading to. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of it's what CW be... is right now. And, and uh, to be honest with you, I'm kind of surprised Supergirl's still going. <laughs> I don't know. I watched one episode, and I, it was cringing all the time. But um, I don't know why. It's just it was a different aspect and different feel than, than Arrow and Flash had going. But. Uh, you know, there's a following out there, I guess. So. Yeah, well, it's not for everybody. It's not for us. No. It, <laughs> uh, I mean, that that might be Flash or uh, the uh, the uh, Legends of Tomorrow and all those yeah. other shows. But yeah. no, man, it's I, nothing against Supergirl. It's just like I can't relate to her. No, <laughs> I, yeah, really. I love her, but I was just yeah. like, yeah, I don't know if I can continue to watch a series based on her. And you know, but she crossed over and such like that. Um, talk Bates Motel. Well, Bates Motel was one uh, – I've been on, like I said, a lot of shows here, um, and Bates Motel was one of the ones that I actually watch. A lot of these shows that I'm on, I don't actually watch uh, myself. I don't watch too much of them. And that, and uh, Bates Motel, so we were pretty excited when we, we got the offer. I didn't even care at the time what the role was. I just wanted to be on the show. And Bates Motel, just if you, if you watch, so it doesn't have that many characters. So if if you get an offer, you kind of take it. Otherwise, you might not ever get an offer again. And I just heard that they're – they're canceling it after the next season and stuff. So thank God I got on that. And, uh, and it was, it was cool working with all those guys, you know, with, with Freddie and, and, and even Michael Eklund, all those guys, uh, it was, it was a really cool show. And none of that, just to, just to be there and see the actual Bates model hotel and all that. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a bad asset to say the least. Well, uh, if nobody wants to know too much, uh, I'll say a spoiler. So skip the next five seconds, <laughs> uh, spoiler alert, somebody dies, a major player. So I was after the season finale that I saw, I'm like, okay, where is this going to go? Right. Cause right. this person's dead. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and pretty it, much the end. Ending, so. Yeah, another really cool thing about the Bates Motel, like the actual, is, that, is that the actual motel itself. I went up there and and I opened the door. The actual whole house that you see in that whole show, it's actually a hollow house. There's nothing inside. Right. Like you walk in, it's literally like you, it's like a big styrofoam house. It's really weird and really crazy because this thing's huge. And you walk in, there's literally nothing. It's it's kind of a, a weird, surreal, weird thing. Well, for the longest time over at uh, Universal Studios Florida or Universal Studios Orlando, uh, over by uh, when the Hard Rock Cafe first opened, right next to it was the Bates Motel. And it was that facade. And it's just like when right. you see it inside, it's like, oh, okay. That's all it is. It's a, yeah. literally an empty house on the hill. And it, it was like the first time uh, our fans of kind of relate to going into the TARDIS for me right. and seeing, right. oh, this thing ends. It doesn't keep going. No. <laughs> it's no. got a back, and I'm like, uh, where's the doctor? Where's the TARDIS and all that? Right. Um, what's your geek cred? My geek cred? Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, what, what shows do you like? Uh, do you like Star oh. Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who? 
Red uh, well, I'm I'm a huge Star Wars guy. I like uh, um I never got into Star Trek or or those kind of things. Um, but Star Wars is definitely something that you know I get excited about when it comes out. That's probably the epitome of how high I go. I'm also a huge Lord of the Rings guy. I like those those kind of shows. And, and I'm kind of like a, you know what I was growing up with and stuff that I get excited about. Things like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, shows like those kind of things. I heard they're redoing Masters of the Universe, and I saw yeah. they they posted a photo of of the cat like um. You know, a he man's cat there, and, and I was like, that's badass. So that, those kind of things to me, it was, you know, I get excited about that stuff, man. I don't care if people are like, oh, you know, Transformers, that was a bad movie. You know, the acting was great. I was like, are you really judging a robot on its acting skills? Like, really? You know, like, <laughs> it's like, it just drives me crazy when critics give bad acting reviews on Transformers and stuff. And you go to see a film about robots kicking ass, and that's what you get. So take it for what it is. Enjoy it. And, or, or shut your mouth and go watch, you know, some Robert De Niro film. Well, I think they're trying to bring things to a newer generation. The Transformers that I grew up with is not going to be the Transformers that of came not. out. If I was somebody who didn't know the Transformers and this was a brand new movie, I would enjoy the hell out of it. But I've kind of gotten a little bit of a core heart to what the original aspects was. But I still enjoy it because, yeah, it's right. robots being other robots. So I look at that from that perspective there. That's right. Now, of all the bodies of work that you've done, what's the most awesome that you like? Well, the, I think uh, recently um, I was just on uh, the – we just finished filming War for the Planet of the Apes, the new one that's uh, coming out next summer. And uh, so I was on there for four months and we just filmed it and that was just beyond crazy about what you know what we got to do and, and who was involved. Uh, so that – that, that was a scale of things that you just don't get to be on very often. I mean, to be in a summer blockbuster film that's, you know, 200 plus million dollars, it's 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 a level of its own for sure. Now, this is, this is the one that's actually supposed to be the finale, right? Yeah, this is the, the climax of the whole Caesar um, trilogy type thing. And uh, so, you know, you had the rise of the Planet of the Apes was how they became, you know, evolved. Uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is, the, you know, they started evolving, you know, facing the humans. And uh, this is this is the the ultimate clash. Now they're advanced. It's years in the future. Um, you see what, uh, you know, the plague that caused the monkeys and stuff has done to the world now. And uh, it's it's the big battle. Yeah. You couldn't tell us the ending, could you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Well, my, my 10 to 15 non-disclosure agreements that 20th Century Fox maybe signed probably wouldn't go too well. With. So you started a company called Checkmate Films. People are not familiar with about it. Can you give us a little bit of the? Yeah, it's it's a, it's an independent production company. Basically, we just make our own stuff and films and stuff. And uh, we just uh, finished our most a uh, feature film. Literally, we just finished it, and it's a comedy called The Perfect Pickup. And uh, it's about four guys who set out to find the perfect way to pick up women. And so we just finished that, and now we're in pre-production of our next film, which I'm, I write, direct, and star in as well. And and it's a comedy called Walk the Walk, and it's it's about speed walking. So uh, it's 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 going to be fun, man. And it's it's just nice to like when you're not on set doing all these big, you know. Um, production studio type uh, uh, projects and stuff that you, you, you create your own stuff and you get to play the characters and, and do the things that you want to do as well. Now, on Planet of the Apes, you're also working with Woody Harrelson. What's he like? Is he exactly what we imagine? <laughs> I was just – I say all the time, Woody is exactly what you oh, think he God. is. Um, you know, he, exactly what he's – and it, it's kind of funny. You know, he's kind of in a way – hippie kind of thing you know he doesn't even answer his own cell phones and stuff it's you know it's you know, radio waves it's it's all that kind of stuff but it, it, it was kind of cool because you know he's he's kind of known he's an avid you know pot smoker all those kind of things and uh -huh. stuff like that and 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 it was kind of funny when i first met him we were in the trailer together and i walked over to meet him and stuff and uh and he just stared at me as i was walking over as if i was like some undercover cop or something like that and then when i you know i reached out to shake his ass that he's that he smiled and laughed he's like Oh yeah, hey man. <laughs> I was like, it was just kind of funny because he, you know, it looked like he was about to be arrested or something. Jeez. Now, one of the projects I see that you guys have worked on, I don't know why, but the name of it is intriguing me. Hell Mary. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> So that was a, a film that was in production. Um, it basically kind of the true story in the origin of uh, Bloody Mary, which is the folklore, like kind of the urban legend fairy tale of, you know, you go into a bathroom, shut off the lights, and you say Bloody Mary seven times and she comes for you. And, and uh, I'm a huge horror genre fan and yeah. as well as comedy. And, and so we started writing that. And, and horror is a very easy genre to sell 
And so we kind of created that. But then we soon realized that we needed a, a much, much larger budget to really make those type of boogeyman horror films, you know, succeed nowadays. So uh, we took our development funding and then we actually started Perfect Pickup um, because basically the more films you do, the bigger budgets you get. So that's actually uh, right now we are going back to that eventually. But right now we have a, a few films, that uh, comedy films that we have lined up before we go back into that genre and finish up Hail Mary. So. Can you tell us a little bit about the comedies you're working on? Or? Yeah, again, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a walk the walk. Walk the walk. It's a, a comp- yeah, walk the walk. It's a, it's about speed walking. Uh, it's kind of along the lines of the Ben Stiller film Dodgeball. You know that kind of humor. It's just this this crazy underdog story where we live in a world where literally race walking um, is the world's biggest sport, and uh, and it's absurdity not only visually of what the sport looks like, but uh, you know when you, you get into the aspects of the rules and how competitive it is, it's it's absurd and it's just. Uh, you know, waiting to be released in, in this hilarity of, of you know, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to say it, like a collision course of, of, of humor. It's, it's really funny to, to watch and, and this actually exists. This is an Olympic sport in real life and it's just kind of funny. So Okay. Yeah. Uh, now I want to see that. Well, where, where could somebody go out and see that? Would that be on YouTube or is that going to be come out? No, uh, we're, so when we go into development and filming and stuff like that, that would actually uh, be full on distribution. So oh, okay. um, again, you know, we're just in the pre-production stages. We haven't filmed that one yet. Same with Perfect Pickup. That's just now in distribution stages as well. So uh, whether it's in select theaters or Netflix, those kind of things, you know, wherever you really can find other movies, uh, that's probably where you'll be able to find it. Now, am I right to say you were in Sanctuary? Yeah, yeah. I play a, a character named Chad Spencer, actually, who's this young kind of adolescent created vampire. That was actually kind of a, a, big, a big one, actually. Uh, it was a pretty big role. And basically, I battled Nikola Tesla in the show. And, uh, and I'm actually the guy who ends up uh, taking Nikola tesla's powers away and so it was, it was kind of a, a pivotal turning point character for that show and that was a lot of fun so chad what else have you got working on what else would you like to tell our fans out there about what's going on with you um well again you know uh, just keep an eye out for the things that are coming out uh i mean obviously war for the planet Apes, uh, we're hoping they'll, they'll release a trailer soon that would be nice to obviously see that uh, you know it, it is still a year away from release uh, but that's definitely going to be the summer blockbuster of 2017. You know, people waiting for this trilogy to come to an end here for quite some time. And it's an epic script that they came up with, thank God, you know, because I was a fan of that too. So when I was reading the script, I was like, you know, just, please don't mess this up. And, uh, and, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, it's Matt Reeves again coming on board. Um, and Andy Serkis is just absolutely amazing in the film. So it's going to be a fun one. And as well, I just found out um, literally yesterday we got cast as a, a pretty big recurring character uh, through this new NBC series called uh, uh, Timeless. And so I'll be on that I've for a while. That. Yeah, and I'll be for Yeah, it's really cool concept. It's about these guys who they, uh, they travel back in time to kind of change history. So like things like, you know. The Hindenburg or, yeah, or the, the Titanic, those kind of things. They try to change history, and, and uh, it's a pretty crazy, crazy show. I just saw the commercial for it, and I think I remember the Hindenburg. At one point, they show a scene where it actually docked. Lands, yeah. It actually lands, and the next scene, it gets blown up. So, the, yeah, this is, this is going to be an interesting story. Yeah, it's it's a really very cool concept of a show. So uh, that's going to be coming out soon, so uh, you can kind of keep an eye out for me on that, and uh, I'll be on there quite a bit soon. Gotcha. Besides IMDb, where else could people find you? Where's your web presence at? I think Twitter as well. Yeah, I mean, it's just Chad Rook across the board for all the social media accounts. Just C H A D R O O K. You know, Facebook, Twitter, all that jazz. Uh, there's also chadrook.com. You know, they, they they need to update that, I guess, <laughs> to further the YouTube, <laughs> but but uh, especially lately. Um, but uh, yeah, those are those are kind of the main presences. Uh, you know, I'm always on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, talk with the fans and stuff like that. Uh, so you know, you're, about, you're out um, there. They could Google you and somewhere they're going to hit you along the way. Though. Oh, it's very easy to find me, man. I'm not like one of those guys who like, you know, whose Twitter handle is, you know, tank 47. It's just like, what? You couldn't find me? Yeah, it's just like, you know, no, <laughs> just my name. It's just my name. Awesome there. Chad, well, thank you so much for being on Marku 42. Like you said, check him out on IMDb. You can find him on Twitter, Facebook, all that. Keep an eye out for him because they, uh, of course, the finale to Planet of the Apes and any projects that he's working with and on coming up, especially with his company, Checkmate Films. Definitely want to keep it going. Thank you so much, Chad, for coming on the show. And uh, we welcome you back at any given time. 
Thanks a lot, bro. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, I'm being backstage. I think it's it's gonna be full of like really awesome like like drinks and stuff, but it's nothing. It's just backstage. I mean, there's no. You know, Pat, Pat, Patty, Patty, we're back. We're back. Uh, okay. Uh, th- thank you, Christian. You did a great job, Chad. I want to thank you so so much for being a part of our crew 42. So that's all. Well, actually, I was gonna say that's all the time we have for the show, but you know, we do have some more time and. We're going to use it for a little bit of promotion. We've got a lot of conventions coming up in September. My convention, which is an all-range convention, but my convention is going to have a special 20th anniversary celebration that I think fans of Mark Who 42 would die for and should definitely try to make it. Uh, I am going to be part of Geekonomicon Oklahoma City. Geekonomicon is going to be a great convention September 2nd through 4th in, well, duh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I've never been there. It's I, I can't wait to go. And it is the 20th anniversary of the TV movie, the 1996 Doctor Who TV movie. There are going to be great celebrities there. At this convention, there's going to be Sylvester McCoy. There's going to be Paul McGann. There's going to be Eric Roberts. There's going to be Yi Ji Cho. There's going to be Daphne Ashbrook, all from the TV movie. And I will be introducing them on stage before we show a screening of that movie. It's going to be fun. I'm also, like I said, I, I will be interviewing Sylvester McCoy on Friday. On Sunday, I'll be interviewing Paul McGann on stage. And, you know, you've done that, haven't you, Patty? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> and so is Christian. Uh, and I will be the third person of Mark Who 42 to interview Paul McGann. We're also going to have Whovians Anonymous on Sunday as well. And there's going to be an all-star panel on Friday night that is going to be out of this world. All the guests of the convention, and not just the Doctor Who guests, are going to be taking part of it, and I'm going to be a moderator at that event, one of the moderators. And people like Adrian Pazdar from Heroes, from Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and from a little show that I used to love called Profit. Do you remember that show? I know of it. I never saw it. He but, was uh... the meanest SOB in the world because he was brought up so badly. His character was brought up in a box. He lived in a box and became a ruthless businessman, and he would stoop to nothing to get ahead. Sounds was... like uh, Bane from uh, Batman. Yeah, I, I guess if it was Batman, it, he would be Bane. Also, other people going to this convention, Ian McNeese, who of course is from Doctor Who as well. He, of course, played Winston Churchill, but he's also from Doc Martin. So if you're a Doc Martin fan or a Doctor Who fan, you can see him. Who else is going to this thing? Tim Russ from Star Trek. A nice guy. Really, really nice fellow. Someone we interviewed, Claudia Christian from Babylon 5, is going to be there. She's a great, great actress, and I can't wait to see her. Felix Silla. Do you remember Buck Rogers? He played Tweaky. I know Felix very well. Well, I don't know him very well, but I know of him very well. Yes, he did Tweaky. He was also Cousin It in Mm -hmm. the the original Adams Family, which might give you an idea of how old he is. God bless him. And during the All-Star panel... I think we are doing a dating game, and he's going to be one of the people that you could win a date with, I think. What? Don't question me on this. All I know okay, all right. is that they have me hosting a dating game, and Felix Silla is one of the people that are going to be up on stage. I don't know. John Noble is going to be at this convention. Fringe, Sleepy Hollow. The man is a great actor. It's going to be a great convention all around. And may I not forget... Also from Doctor Who, someone we've had on the show several times, Simon Fisher Becker, will be there. So I'm going to have a great time. If you want to know more about this convention, go to geekexpos.com and check it out. (sighs) And you know what? I think on that note, we're going to end this episode of Mark Who 42. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves listening in here on Krypton Radio, or maybe you were listening to us at markwho42.net. Or maybe you were listening on iTunes, or maybe you were listening Geekcast Radio Network, or maybe you were listening at Florida Geek Scene, 
or maybe you're listening at Google Play Podcasts, or maybe, you know, you could have been listening to us at a many, many places, and we're glad you have. Don't forget, go to markwho42.net for our old podcasts, as well as iTunes, and Doctor Who News and other news from beyond the Hooniverse, like our guest today, Chad Rook. Go to our Facebook page, Mark Who 42 Tweet us at Mark Who 42 Go to our Tumblr page, Mark Who 42 We are everywhere around the net. And we are done with this episode. Any final words from our peanut gallery? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> I think it's all been said. <laughs> it's all been said. If you're a Doctor Who fan, don't forget, come out to... Uh, Geekonomicon, Oklahoma City. If you're a Star Trek fan, eh, go to New York this weekend. Do one or the other. Uh, it's up to you. This just in. There's actually a news story that we did not cover that just came out. According to the Mirror, so take it with a grain of salt, Power of the Daleks may be being made into an animated version of Power of the Daleks is the first story with Patrick Troughton, and the report is that they are making an animated version of it. Now, because it is the mirror, it may not be real. We will let you know in upcoming episodes if this is a real thing. So until next time, allons-y! Marku 42 was written and presented by Mark Baumgarten, Christian Basil, Kayla Oscalillo, and Patty Hawkins. This episode was edited, directed, and produced by Mark Baumgarten. Visit Marku42.net where you can register and become part of the Hooniverse Army. We can be contacted by email at mark at markhoo42, subject line, question mark. If you'd like a chance to be a guest on our radio show, send an email to our media relations director, Christian Basil, at markhoo42media at yahoo.com. You can have markhoo42 entertain at your next event or convention. Go to heroesonhand.com slash marku42. Space Coast Comics is a free monthly magazine found in over 120 locations currently throughout Brevard County, parts of Osceola, Belusia, and Indian River County in Florida, and soon to be available in Chicago. Follow them on Facebook to learn more. Doctor Who and its properties are owned by the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. This show is owned and copyrighted by Mark Baumgarten 2016. This is Krypton Radio.